my name is Nompendula Shabangu, aka Noms, and I'd like to welcome you to my YouTube channel. I am absolutely over the moon to have with me here today a very phenomenal lady that I look up to so, 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 so much, who is a mama to me. And, you know, I could go on and on and on and on, really. You know, um, you know a couple of weeks ago, if you actually watched... Um, the video on visioneering that I did, I had her husband on my YouTube channel, we're talking about visioneering. And so today we have Dr. Jana Lackey. Let me not spoil it too much. I'll just let her introduce herself because like I said, I could go on and on and on. <laughs> thank you. Wow, thank you so much. It's so good to be with you today. And mm -hmm. I'm just honored to be mm -hmm. here. I'm, I'm a woman, a wife, a mother, I'm passionate about people, uh -huh. seeing people's lives lifted. Uh, my husband and I came here over 30 years ago, close to 35 years ago, from Texas to yeah. Botswana. And uh, being here has just been the most wonderful experience in life that we could ever have. We've got four children. We've raised our kids here. Yeah. Uh, three are grown and gone. One's still with us. Uh -huh. um, and yeah, I just, I just love you. <laughs> Looking what do you do on a daily basis? I mean, you do so much, but what do you do on a daily basis? Oh, gosh. Every, there's no two days the same uh -huh. in my life. Uh -huh. Yeah. There's, as people ask me, what is the day in a life? And that's, that's one of the hardest questions I can answer. But in a day, mm -hmm. you know, I, I help take care of my family. I love to cook. Uh -huh. I cook meals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I also... Uh, I'm the CEO of Love Botswana, uh -huh. which is one of the largest nonprofit organizations, mm -hmm. NGOs, faith-based NGOs in the yeah. country. And, uh, you know, I've just, we've got lots of programs that we do and problems that come our way <laughs> and challenges and yeah. a whole lot of exciting mm -hmm. things happen every single day too. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's, that's what I do. Uh -huh. And, you know, so I was really, you know, in, in trying to think about, you know, how do we compress Mama J's life? You know, it's, it's so, <laughs> it's so broad. Like you already said, there's so much that goes on. And I've seen, you know, you just, you know, you're such a multifaceted person. And in, in praying about this and thinking about this, the one word that came to my mind was surrender. You know, you live such a surrendered life. And I thought that it would be an important um, topic to touch mm -hmm. on, to talk about, you know, because we talk a lot about surrender. But, you know, what does it really mean, yeah. you know, to surrender? So, you know, let's start with what is, what is, what is surrender? Well, it's, it's a lifestyle, mm -hmm. for sure. Wow. I'm going to put my yeah. specs on. Well, let's start with the def dictionary definition mm -hmm. of, of surrender. Um, what is surrender? Uh, some dictionary definition is uh, to give oneself up, mm -hmm. to yield, wow. to concede, to abandon, mm -hmm. to relinquish, wow. to lay down one's arms, to wave the white flag. So that's, that's part of the, and that's the verb. Mm -hmm. I, I, in this context, I think we're talking about surrender as the verb, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. an action word. Yeah. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. You know, in, in the churches, uh, you know, you, some people, you see people worshiping God and they'll raise their hands and stuff. You know, what are they doing? You know, um, mm -hmm. so if a bank robber came in and said, stick them up, you know, yeah. you would you do that. You know, that's what surrender looks like. Yeah. That's what it is. You know, you're saying, okay, I give up. You're submitting to something. Mm -hmm as well you know you're you're conceding your and uh, so that's the dictionary definition mm -hmm. I know that there's been you know just very instrumental moments in your life that you can pinpoint to you know just mm -hmm. of surrender mm -hmm. um, starting from you know I know you know a bit of your story you know from when you gave your life to Jesus let's talk about yeah. that yeah. Mm -hmm. well you know it I never forget it you know, because there was a point in time when I was 14 years old that mm -hmm. that I my life was a mess. Yeah. You know, I can't believe it or not. You know, I was a very naughty mm -hmm. child, and uh, you know, at one point I just said, God, if you're real, mm -hmm. you know, come and do something in my life. Forgive me. You know, mm -hmm. take my life. And that was my first step of, of real yeah. surrender. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
my life changed in that moment, you know. And as I began my journey with the Lord, uh, as a teenager, you know, coming out of drugs and skipping school, I was 14, but <laughs> Lord help my mama, you know, she, <laughs> she yeah. was a praying mama, thank God. And, and a lot of people in my life were praying for me, actually. And, um, but there were times when, and, and so when I made that decision, it was solid, you know, there was no turning back. Mm -hmm. I had opportunities to, yeah. uh, and I learned about a lot about the grace of God and God's mm -hmm. forgiveness. But I remember being in my bedroom and every, every, we moved around a bit because my dad in, in that process left our, our family and, uh, you know, we had to downsize and yeah. shift around to different places. But everywhere I went, I carved out a little prayer room. You know, yeah. prayer closet, you uh -huh. know, just that place that I could shut the door. I could go in my bedroom, then I could shut the door and go in there. And sometimes I'd just open the clothes and I, I had a map on the wall of, mm. of the world, a prayer map, you know, yeah. and, and I always just made sure that I could just close myself in with Jesus, you know, and just, just be with him. Mm. And I remember one specific time, you know, I, I saw two roads and, the, you know, the Lord is just saying to me, Janet, which way you want to go, you mm -hmm. know. I mean, I had already given my life to him. Yeah. I was already a Christian. Mm -hmm. But, you know, was I going to take the wide, easy road mm -hmm. or the narrow, hard road yeah. where there was only just room for two? Mm -hmm. You know, those old yeah. gospel songs, you know, mm -hmm. there's just room for just two, <laughs> you know. No more, no less, mm -hmm. you know, just Jesus and you. And, uh, and so there was that road, but then there was the wider road. And it usually was around, especially as a teenager, you know, around peer my mm -hmm. friends and yeah. was I gonna just go with the crowd mm -hmm. you know kind of thing and so I remember you know saying God I'm gonna go with you on the narrow road I'm gonna follow you on that road wow. you know? and then a, a scripture that became a key is a key scripture in my life is in Deuteronomy mm -hmm. so Deuteronomy 30 mm -hmm. 15 to 20 right in there those verses he says God says See, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. Yeah. I command you to love the Lord your God, walk in obedience to him, and keep his commandments, laws, and decrees. And then you will live and increase, and the Lord will bless you in the land that, that you're entering. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, he, so he's saying, I put before you life and death, blessing and cursing. And then he tells you which one to pick. Yeah. You know, he says, so choose life. So that you and your children may live and, and that you may love the Lord your God. Listen to his voice and hold fast to him because the Lord's your life and he'll give you many years in the land. So he gives us a promise and he says, mm -hmm. choose life or choose death, mm -hmm. which one you want. So I choose life. Yeah. But what does that look like? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. how do you do that? You know, and then he just makes it so simple for us. He wants us to be like little children. Mm -hmm. You know, we try to make it so complicated and, you know, we grow and we get all this schooling and, you know, <laughs> degrees and work experience and, you know, then we become, sometimes you get married, you have children, become parents and then, you know, you're with all this knowledge and, you know, and baggage as well. But, mm -hmm. you know, God just wants us to be his little girls, his, mm -hmm. his, his children, his yeah. sons, his daughters, and just follow him, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So that was, you know, the first real encounter you know because you have to start somewhere and then you know there was another encounter you know when right. uh, you were a bit older mm -hmm. now you know and yeah. you're here today in Botswana as a result of that yeah, Steve, that's can right. you narrate that a bit <laughs> yes it's it's two parts really uh -huh. um, the day I finished my last class in high school mm -hmm. senior school I was driving down the, the big Texas Houston freeway and I just felt God say pull over and I pulled mm -hmm. over and and turn the radio off, turn the radio. And I felt like he was saying to me, I mean, I almost audibly heard him say, Jana, you'll never have a regular job as far as the world is concerned. Mm -hmm. I was in the middle of trying to decide, was, was I gonna go study this? Or was I gonna, you know, go, what was I gonna do, yeah. you know? I knew I had a heart for ministry. Mm -hmm. And God had called me to work with youth. I'd been working with youth yeah. all through my high school years, you know, going around, sharing my testimony, <laughs> playing, singing songs, and, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, but now I'm finished with high school. What does it look like, you know? My, so my last four years of high school were really just all out for God, you know, and saying, yes, I'll follow you. And, 
and I had many opportunities to, you know, let Jesus take the wheel, yeah. or I take the wheel and yeah. crash. You know? <laughs> so, but that led me to to know that um, God was calling me to go to Bible school, mm -hmm. and. You know, everything that God's ever done in my life is a miracle story. I didn't, we didn't have money. I didn't have money to pay for school or anything. But God made a way. In that surrender, there's always miracles, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we're walking with him, he'll take care of, he'll take care of it, yeah. you know. Um, if there's a path, you know, that I felt like I was supposed to go and there was no physical, you know, provision for that, there was always then if I took that step of faith, yeah. you know, it's like, God, I'm believing you for a car. I want a car, you know, but you don't have a driver's license, you know, yeah. <laughs> you, you got to do the possible yeah. and like, then God will do the impossible yeah, and make you right. away. Mm -hmm. So that's what happened all through my teen years, you know, when mm -hmm. we were in need. And so the Lord opened a door for me to go to Bible school, Christ for the Nations yeah. in Dallas, Texas. Great school. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, and, you know, they had a music program, and, and they had, a, um, but missions and music were the two things that really drew me there, you know. I never thought about leaving America, but I was willing, you know, if God called me to do that. But I was busy with youth ministry all over the place, and so one day, uh -huh. uh, I was at, at the opening assembly, uh -huh. and there was uh, worship, and I was so good that day, you know, and and then before we ended, there was a speaker that came through from Swaziland, and um, he was American missionary, and you know, I don't know his name, or I don't remember <laughs> anything about what yeah. he said, uh -huh. but God uses people and circumstances to, to be like a conduit, yeah, that's you know, right. to get something from his heart to your heart, mm -hmm. and that's what happened in that chapel service. Yeah. Uh, while he was talking, God just opened up um, the mission field. You know, and, and it, for me, it was it was Southern Africa. You know, I thought, and and I can't even explain what happened, but yeah. but I just felt God's heart. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and for the the people of, of the world, you know, I mean, there's people right there in America that need Jesus. Yeah. You know, but God put Africa on my heart, and so during that service that. Um, you know, everybody's listening and I'm sitting there overwhelmed and so afterwards I'll go to my room and I just I, I just got on my knees and um, locked the door in the bathroom because I had five roommates you know, that were there on break and uh -huh. went in my bathroom I just and I, I literally put my hand God I don't understand this what's happened but yes Lord I'll go you know there's a scripture in Isaiah said who, who will I send who will go for us and Isaiah said here am I send me you know and that's what I said Lord yeah. send me and I used to tell the teenagers I talked to, look, to be sold out to Jesus, you don't have to become a missionary to go to Africa, you know. And, yeah. you know, as I say that, I'm almost embarrassed because, you know, as Americans, we do have our ideas of, did, about Africa and what's, what it's like and all that, you know. And for that, I apologize, yeah. you know. Uh -huh. Well, you've had 30 years, you yeah. know, to be able to that's right. unlearn so many things. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And so, you know, in my mind, I, you know, I had pictures of what that looked like, you know, and, and stuff. But, um, but as a result, you know, I started taking steps to say, what does that look like to go, you know? Yeah. So when I got the call, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that is that is the defining moment mm -hmm. that changed the trajectory course of my life. Yeah. You know, I knew that not only was I not gonna have a regular job, mm -hmm. you know, as far as the world is concerned, uh, you know, I, I was I was gonna go to Africa, mm -hmm. you know? And I, I made absolute commitment to God, I'm gonna do that, yes. And, you know, I started learning everything I could. It's like I found out it's a pretty big place, you know. It's it's not a country. <laughs> it's a continent, you know. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Southern Africa is, mm -hmm. is not the country of South Africa. You know, all yeah, those things that, yeah, yeah. you know, uh -huh. typical American you know, <laughs> worldview, you know, did, doesn't know. And so I, I, I started learning what I could. I made friends with every person from Africa in the school, you know. And... Yeah. Um, and, and that was early in my two-year course that I took there. And, uh, you know, it really, everything I was doing at that point, you know, I, I had a goal in yeah. mind. And 
you know, then relationships came and opportunities for relationships uh -huh. and that sort of thing. And so I'm like, what does that look like? Yeah. You know? Oh well, surely the guy that marries me is gonna want to go to. <laughs> well, I found out right away that wasn't the case. You know. <laughs> so I had my all through my teens even I had my standards in my relationships. You yeah. know, I had you know was willing to compromise. You know, in different areas and you know I want obviously who I dated was gonna be you know a Christian and um, and I I really limited my dating in high school as well. You know, and and I found out through some wonderful teaching of. A woman named Joy Dawson, that you know, God's idea of dating is strong friendships. You know, godly friendships. I mean, how boring, right? No, <laughs> it's not boring. You know, it yeah. saves you so much heartache. You know, to to just be focused. So, anyway, that's another mm -hmm. topic, I suppose. But when I was um, in Bible school, I kind of honed in on my my list, mm -hmm. and my list was three things. Yeah. It was number one. My mate had to love Jesus as much as I did, mm -hmm. you know. Number two, and I love Jesus a lot, you know. <laughs> I mean, okay, one time I went on a date, uh -huh. uh, you know, a friendship date with some friends. Uh -huh. And we went to this restaurant, and as we got out of the car, there's, there's a massive parking lot full of, you know, people just partying. Mm -hmm. Mostly teenagers, mm -hmm. you know, young people partying, partying, drinking and everything. And there was this, this, like, water fountain with this brick thing around it mm -hmm. and I just I said I'll be right back and it, the Holy Spirit was just drawing me you know <laughs> just to tell him about Jesus you know yeah. so so I, I said guys I'll be right back so I, I, there was another couple you know and so I leave and I go I just stand up there on the thing and I'm like did what I do I do this crazy <laughs> kind of stuff and I'm like excuse me everyone hey can I have your attention I had no idea what I was gonna yeah. say mm -hmm. or anything you know but I'm like you know what? And then it, God just started, mm -hmm. you know, kind of giving me the words. And I just shared about God's love. And God cares about you and all that, you know. And so this guy's like, <laughs> you know, okay. So I, I finished and I, you know, it's like the leading of God just kind of lifted. And I was like, okay, thanks, bye. If you need to talk to me, I'll be over here. Uh -huh. And so then we go inside and we have our ice cream that, uh -huh. that we went for. And, and as we're eating our ice cream, someone knocks on the window and, and they're like, married it was uh -huh. this couple and long story short yeah. there was this couple that came in a, and it was a teenage couple and she was pregnant you know they hadn't told their parents yet they didn't know what to do and we prayed with them I got to lead them to the Lord yeah. it was just wonderful and <laughs> everybody lived happily ever after <laughs> <laughs> and he never yeah. asked me on another date after that. <laughs> oh, gosh. I wonder why <laughs> so you know yeah. the loving Jesus as much as I did you know yeah. that kind of really was something but the other thing was he had to be called to Africa mm -hmm. and you know I tried he, he had to be called to missions for a while and there was this guy that was called to Mexico but you know we dated for a while and then it never never <laughs> shifted to Africa and he finally said to me you know Jana I'm not gonna be going with you to Africa <laughs> real dear friend even today you know yeah. because that's the thing if you keep a relationship godly mm -hmm. It doesn't get weird afterwards. Yeah. You can still be friends. Uh -huh. You know, it's beautiful. It, it really is possible, young yeah. people. I'm going to tell the teenagers, it really mm -hmm. is possible to yeah. do that. So he had to be called to Africa. And the third thing was like, God, I wouldn't mind if he was good looking either. Yeah. You know, so third was, you know, hey, I got all three. Yeah. You know, uh -huh. um, but it didn't happen quickly <laughs> or easily. Uh -huh. It did not. So I finished Bible school uh -huh. and I went to the travel agent mm -hmm. and I went to book my ticket. You know, right before I graduated, I thought, let me just get the show on the road and, you know, mm -hmm. and I'll head to Africa. And uh, I had a dear friend, you know, Joe Berg, that I was going to plan to be with and base out of there and do youth ministry, you know, and that kind of thing. So I had my idea of what I thought God had in mind yeah. for what it looked like to mm -hmm. answer the call mm -hmm. and go to Africa. And uh, I go to buy the ticket and I leave the travel agent and, I'm, and I got the prices, you know, so yeah. that I could pray and get my faith and work and do whatever I had to do to earn the money to go. And uh, on the way out the door, the Holy Spirit said, Jana, you know, he always calls me by my first uh -huh. name. I, I heard his voice just like inside me and said, Jana, yes, Lord. He said, don't go now, wait. Yeah. <laughs> I'm 
going to get sucked into the American dream. Yeah. I'm going to get, I don't, my biggest fear was to, you know, just marry somebody, anybody, you know, and, and, and get a, you know, I started having kids, get a house and a mortgage and, and get just sucked into debt and, and all of that. You know, that yeah. was my biggest fear. Mm -hmm. And look, there's nothing wrong with yeah. living that life, you know. Um, it's that life that, that people live that help us to even serve God in Africa, that people that give sacrificially to help yeah. us to be here, you know, and do what we do. But for me, I was like, I was so scared that I was going to get sidetracked. You yeah, know, because, because you already knew what it was that God had called you to. You that's know, so you right. couldn't afford to. Yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. And I saw people take that. Yeah. To me, that's the wide, that for me, that was the wide road. Yeah. You know, and that narrow road that I told Jesus I'd walk with him on, you know, was was to follow him every step of the way. So here I am done with school. So, uh, you know, I'm like, well, what do I do now? And so I went back home mm -hmm. and started serving God in my little local church. Yeah. And how know? old were you at this at this point? Um, like, okay. 21. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, 20. Yeah, 2021. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> and so I went back to my local church and just, I became a youth pastor, mm -hmm. single girl youth pastor. That's tough in itself. Yeah. And, uh, but I did that and, you know, we, we won lots of people to Jesus, you know, and went to lots of parking lots there mm -hmm. in high school <laughs> parking lots and things. And, you know, and, and, um, you know, there was a season and it was from like 21 to 26. Okay. Wow. Five years. Uh, yeah. Wow. I would say four years before mm -hmm. somebody came into my life, <laughs> you know, and I wasn't about to wait around to get married and then get in the ministry or go to Africa, you know, that I, no, I didn't need that. You know, I could just go and uh -huh. do it and follow Jesus and he'd take care of the rest. Sure. I wanted to be in a relationship, mm -hmm. wanted to be married, you know, yeah. and all that. But that was number two, you know, next to, not even number two, even yeah. on the list. Um, but every time, you know, and I would, I felt like I was just a little aircraft here in Maun. We have the second busiest airport in the Southern Hemisphere. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. we, we got so many airplanes and sometimes they have to circle around until they can land. You know, I felt like I was a little Cessna, two, two, you know, two, two, flying around, you know, waiting for to be able to come in for the landing. And, mm -hmm. and that season was so hard. Mm. And surrender was in there because, you know, you, yes, I had surrendered to go to Africa and yeah. everything, but what about the waiting? Yeah. You know, so I got my vision, I got my plan, got it all worked out, but, but waiting for that to happen, I had so many opportunities to do different things, to yeah. do other things. And, I, I, and, you know, so what? I didn't just sit around for four years. Mm. No, man, I, I was busy for God, yeah. you know, serving where I could. And I mean, I'm imagining also like what you're talking about, the challenge in, in the waiting is because you didn't even really know what it was that you were waiting for, right? Exactly. I, mean, and, I didn't know what that looked and like. And when it was going to happen, right? you know, but I mean, you knew that you had to wait for yeah. God to say, now you can go. Yes. But you didn't know leading up to that, yeah. you know, what exactly it was. That's right. right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So I, I got it job you know in america we we if you're if, unless you're very wealthy you know you you work and go to school yeah. you know you, you do both and and a lot of country a lot of places you do that um in botswana you know very privileged that yeah. that students are able to to, to mm -hmm. study and focus on their yeah. studies you know the government really yeah. does so much for the students they do mm -hmm. um but for me i had you know i was working and so i got a job and and you know, I I got in even in sales and marketing and in, in media and radio and and started working with Christian concert promotion. Some wonderful doors opened up. Yeah. I mean, big limelight ministry. Wow. You know, mm -hmm. we filled stadiums with with Christian artists. And back in the '80s, you know, that we were just really getting into, you know, where you had Christian artists that were also big names and were making the Billboard charts and stuff. Yeah. And and. Uh, so during that time, you know, you know, the thing is, nothing's wasted yeah, it, with right. God. And nothing's wasted in that time period. And so things I was doing, sometimes I thought, what does this have to do with Africa? Uh, and now in hindsight, it's incredible. Yeah. You know, I can see everything yeah. that I did and learned. I even went back to school, you know. So I, I, I went back to school, and it's not like I had a strong leading to do that or I was working towards something. 
you know, it was like, I guess I'll just do the possible and while I'm waiting on God to do the rest, you know. So I did a whole lot of different things. So while I was waiting, all these amazing things were happening, but my heart, that longing for the yeah. vision, you know. And uh, sometimes while we're waiting on, on God to do something, you know, we could jump the gun to try to do what we think we're supposed to do. That's right. But, but if we just stick close to Jesus, you know, and listen to his voice and, and follow peace, you know, so that leading, the, everything I did, there was either a definite, no, don't do this, or <laughs> God opened doors, you know. So as he's opened doors and I, and I go through them. So had I not been in that holding pattern, I would have... You know, so Jerry's over here, and he's he's coming my way, right? He doesn't even know me, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And and I'm over here, and I'm I'm trying to follow Jesus, you know, mm -hmm. so that I don't get off track. And and if I would have misstepped mm -hmm. at any time, then we could have missed each other. Mm -hmm. But because I was in that place of God, I don't understand this, but okay, I'll do this. I'll keep showing up for work, you know. I'll keep doing what I'm doing. Our paths crossed. Oh. At a, at a Christian concert, mm -hmm. uh, he was backstage, I had invited his roommate's sister to be the DJ, mm -hmm. who, you know, the announcer to, to MC the, the thing, and uh, he was sitting there afterwards, and, you know, and, and I'm at this point where I'm like, God, I actually was reading a book about um, uh, this missionary lady who, who was called to go to Africa, mm -hmm. and uh, she was also in a holding pattern, mm -hmm. and her husband uh, to be, mm -hmm. they were actually dating, he was just taking his sweet time, <laughs> and it just went on for years and years and years, and oh, eventually, wow. yeah, it was really painful to read, you know, <laughs> and because my, also, my worst fear in relationships was yeah. that I would get into a relationship mm -hmm. and invest a year, two years, three years, mm -hmm. and then I missed it, it wasn't the right one, and you end up breaking up, and I would have yeah. wasted all that time, you know? Yeah. That was really scary for mm -hmm. me. And so, you <laughs> know. It's scary for lots of people. Yeah, yeah. it yeah. is, you know, to be in that place. Yeah. The author of that book was Elizabeth Elliot, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, Passion for person. Purity yeah. was uh -huh. the name of the book, and I've shared it with so many young, young yeah. women. I think you even. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I met Jerry. Mm -hmm in the process of reading that book, mm -hmm. Passion for Purity, you know, and, and waiting, and, you know, and all this, and mm -hmm. um, that, that book ended, in, it, that story ended in tragedy. She married him, and they were only married for a few years, oh, and wow. he was yeah. murdered and massacred by wow. the very people that he went to reach in mm -hmm. Central America, South America. Jim um, Elliott. Yes, Jim Elliott. There's a book. A, there's a book yeah. about it. There's, you know, there's a movie even yeah. called The End of the Spear, which is an amazing yes, story. Yeah, I've yeah. seen that movie. Yeah. So I met Jerry that night, uh -huh. right? And I, we were sitting around this big circle, and we were all just relaxing because we had just finished the whole tour of this particular couple of artists that we did around Texas. And it's like, oh, finally, you know, we can relax. And as I was sitting there, I'm looking across at my friend's brother's friend, mm -hmm. and there. I thought to myself, oh, wow, he's cute, you uh -huh. know? And uh, it's too bad he's so young, because yeah. the friend was young. Mm -hmm. His roommate was young, mm -hmm. much younger than, than I was. Well, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. five years, I guess. And um, so I, I, I just assumed they were the same age. Mm -hmm. you know? He looked really young. He still looks really young. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, but then we all started kind of hanging out. We realized we all went to the same church, the Lakewood mm -hmm. Church. And, mm -hmm. Uh, it's a big church, so you don't mm -hmm. always know everybody. Yeah. But we all just kind of started hanging out and doing stuff together. And as I was with him, I realized, gosh, this guy has to be older than, than I think. He must mm -hmm. be. couldn't have done. I kind of kept picking up things yeah. that he'd done. And so I realized that. And so finally I asked my friend, I said, how old is Jerry Lackey anyway? And then she's like, whoa. <laughs> <you know? laughs> And so from there, and now, by the way, I'm reading this book, yeah. you know, about waiting and all mm -hmm. that, you know, and so I just was freaked out. I'm like, he's, it, it turns out he's six years older than mm -hmm. me. I had mm -hmm. no idea. And so I'm like, oh my gosh. She said, look, good luck. He's a great guy. Good luck, though, having him uh, to open up, to tell him much about, you, mm -hmm. you know, having him open up, he's, yeah. you know, and, um. Uh, but he's a great guy. He'll pull information mm -hmm. out of people and get them talking and stuff. But just pretty private, mm -hmm. you know. So, 
uh, she put her magic to work and tried to <laughs> create these situations. You know, people wonder where I get it from. <laughs> Thanks, Carla. <laughs> so we started hanging out, all of us, you know. And then I realized that Dr. Carla shared with me, you know, hey, he's a great guy. Yeah. Uh, good luck on getting him to open up about himself, though, you know, mm -hmm. private person. And, you know, uh, but so as we started hanging out and stuff, you know, we started kind of sharing and all this and, you know, getting to know each other. And I really started, really started liking him yeah. a lot, mm -hmm. you know. But, uh, you know, I had my list, mm -hmm. you know. And so we ended up uh, at this and I was very guarded. Mm -hmm. At this point, because I'm reading this book, you yeah. know, about being so <laughs> purposeful, and I was at the point where I'm like, you know, if, if I never get married, I'm okay. I'm, you know, yeah. God, if you'll just let me go to Africa, I'm, that's all I want to do. And, and he, you know, usually when God speaks, he doesn't say it again and again. He mm -hmm. just says it. And if he doesn't say something different, yeah. he's saying, <laughs> stick it out, you know. Yeah. And so that's, that's what I knew. And um, so... There, there came a time when Carla, now my friend, mm -hmm. you know, she said, I gotta, I gotta, you gotta, you gotta go on a date. And, and, and I'm like, Carla, I'm not gonna be the first to ask him on a date. And she goes, Jana, because I was so super spiritual. She's like, <laughs> Where do you find that in the Bible anyway? Yeah. You know, so I'm like, okay, what do you have in mind? She goes, okay. So there was this concert coming up, and I was, um, it, it was a, uh, an artist named Russ Taft mm -hmm. and he was doing a crossover album where it's called the metals tour And mm -hmm. so it played on secular and Christian, you know, and so so we had this big press conference organized and in, in Houston and and, uh, and And I was you know hosting it and putting it together and so she said Jenny ask him to come with you to that You know, and that's when I said I'm not gonna be the first to ask him <laughs> on a date, you know, yeah. ask him on a date uh, and and she, where do you find that in the Bible, you know? Uh -huh. So she helped me with my little speech, you know, because he really <laughs> liked this artist too, uh -huh. Russ Taft, you know? And so, you know, ask him to escort you to the, to the thing. So that night in a, a church, you know, she said, okay, we're gonna go to the, the snack shack and we're gonna get something to eat. And as we're sitting there, I'll lead you into it. I said, okay, okay, fine. You know, so I had a little <laughs> memorized little spiel. So anyway, long story short, yeah. So hey, you wanna? Would you wanna come come with me to the first half day? And we're hosting a press conference, you know. And he's like, Yeah, I'd love to, you know. <laughs> so okay, that's done. So went shopping for outfit, you yeah. know. I didn't come by the dress dressing cool naturally. Uh -huh. Okay, you know, my mom's really cool actually. Uh -huh. and my mom it took me. I got this really slick, you know, cutting edge you know, <laughs> '80s uh -huh. outfit, you know. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, we. We went and we did, the, you know, we did the press conference. He was just kind of quiet in the background, just kind of watching, you know. And I really, like I say, I was really, yeah. you know, crushing yeah. big mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. on him. And so I was, I was so nervous. And so anyway, we're there, and and uh, afterwards, we everything ended, and he had a cute little red MG car, and we couldn't take that. We needed, we were taking the artist, you know, from the airport. And all, so we had to take my little car, you know, which mm -hmm. had more than, so I'm driving. Yeah. So not only are we on a date, I'm driving, you know. So afterwards, uh, we left for me to take him to his car and um, we get in the car and uh, somehow the conversation goes to uh, him telling me about his experience with God when he was in Bible school. Mm -hmm. And he has a beautiful story mm -hmm. and it was so similar to mine. So he starts telling me the story. Mm -hmm. And I'm driving, you know. And in Houston, we have the 610 loop, which is a loop around the city. Mm -hmm. And so I get on the 610 loop, and I'm supposed to exit a few exits up, you know. And he starts talking, and he starts talking about his call hmm. to Africa. Mm 